picture this. You're back in 1970, cruising along in one of Detroit's latest performance offerings on Telegraph Road or Woodward Avenue, Detroit, looking for someone to line up with at a stoplight. As you stop at a red light, a black 1970 426 Hemi Challenger with a gator grain vinyl top and white tail stripe rolls up beside you. You look over at the driver, exchange nods knowing what's going to happen next. And as the light turns green, the quiet night explodes with the roaring of two big block V8s screaming. As you two barrel towards the next cross street, the black challenger continues to pull away until all you see are taillights, exhaust pipes, and an odd trailer hitch. You let off the gas knowing you lost, looking forward to be able to talk to the driver of the black challenger. But as you let off, the driver of the black challenger just drives off into the night not to be seen for some time again. And with that, the legend of the Black Ghost was born. To tell the story of the Black Ghost, we need to start with the story of owner Godfrey Qualls. Born on January 18th, 1942, in Nashville, Tennessee, the family moved to Detroit in 1944 like many families during the time due to the automotive boom that was happening there. His father, and I'm sorry if I butcher this name, Cleolis, would later find a job at the Chrysler Warren Truck Assembly Plant. From that point on, Godfrey would start to take after his father and his love of automobiles. After high school, he was drafted and joined the famed 82nd Airborne Division. He deployed to the Dominican Republic as part of Operation Power Pack during the 1965 Civil War after it was reported that the rebel armies were receiving communist support. However, another alert three and a half years later did result in the 82nd being under fire again. Late in April of 1965, the 82nd Airborne, as part of the Army's Strike Command, received emergency orders to deploy into the revolt-torn Dominican Republic. The 82nd led the way as the advance guard of an inter-American peace force fielded by the OAS, the Organization of American States. Anti-communist Dominicans were on hand to greet them with warm support. During combat, he was wounded by a grenade and was awarded a Purple Heart. He also served in the Vietnam War. He released sometime around 1968 or 69 and watched his younger brother, by a black 1968 Dodge Charger RT, powered by a 440 with a white bumblebee stripe. Not to be outdone, Godfrey went to the same Ray and Al Brothers Dodge on Chalmers Avenue and ordered the car that would be later known as the Black Ghost. Launched in 1969 for the 1970 model year, the Challenger was late to the party in a growing pony car market, which really kicked off in 1964 when Ford launched the Mustang. Coming April 17th, the unexpected, the new Ford Mustang. Brilliant new kind of car. A new generation of Fords for the new breed of Americans who want stick shift action and room for four, who collect sports car badges and trading stamps, who want the elegance of a European touring car and till now have to settle for basic transportation. This is for them. This is Mustang. With an unexpected variety of options, Mustang is the one car that's designed to be designed by you. Get ready to meet the unexpected April 17th at your Ford dealers. Mustang is only days away. It was designed to compete with the likes of the Cougar and the Firebird in the upper end of the segment with a staggering amount of trim levels. You can get a 1970 Challenger in seven different trim levels and nine different engines. Delivered in December 1969, part of what makes the Black Ghost unique is the options that Godfrey chose. Things like the lock and gas cap, passenger side mirror, and AM FM radio are things we take for granted today, but they were rare back then. But the big ticket items that made this car special was the black vinyl gator grain roof, the four-speed manual transmission, and the iconic 426 Hemi. 
arguably the greatest engine from the era. All for a grand total of $5,272.40, a true one-of-a-kind car with no others known to have been ordered with these options. Now obviously, there's more to this story than just a Hemi car with rare options. Godfrey and this car have an interesting side story that makes this even more unique to Mopar fans. When Godfrey was ordering the car, he insisted on a shaker hood. But the dealer refused to sell him one, stating, if you want a shaker hood, then buy a Cuda. Annoyed with that response, Godfrey successfully sued the dealership, who was ordered to install a hood on his car. As a result of his lawsuit, Chrysler issued a memo on April 15, 1970, stating that the hood was now an available option. So shaker hood fans, old and new, can thank him for that. But back to the street racing, which made the Black Ghost so legendary. Why did Godfrey keep these street racing adventures a secret? Well, sometime between releasing from the military and getting the Black Ghost, Godfrey became a police officer with the city of Detroit. And to top it off, a motorcycle traffic enforcement officer, a position where he could also enjoy his love of motorcycles that he also raced. One could imagine the optics of a traffic enforcement officer being caught street racing light to light in the middle of the night. His son and friend share some of these stories in other videos, but I won't do them justice, so I will just link to them below and you can go listen to them there. In 77, Godfrey re-enlisted in the US Army and joined a special forces group where he earned his Green Beret. He earned the nickname the Zulu Warrior, which is the story behind the Pan-African flag stickers on both sides below the RT badges. As the 80s rolled around, the car, which was a mainstay in Detroit street racing scene, seemed to have vanished. Rumors began to swirl around Detroit as to what happened to the Black Ghost. Was it wrecked? Was it sold? But just like most people with families, life gets in the way, and the car began to sit, locked away in the family garage. Fast forward to 2015, Godfrey unfortunately is suffering from a second round of cancer, and this time it's bone cancer. On December 21st, he signed the title of his car over to his son Gregory and tells him not to give away his car. On December 24th, Godfrey passed away at the age of 73. Sometime in 2017, Gregory, now the owner of the legendary Black Ghost, decided to get the car running again. Keeping the car original, all the essentials were done. Brakes, suspension, fuel lines, rubber, and stuff like that. And after 37 years, the Black Ghost roared to life and it made its first public appearance at the November 2017 Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. A fitting tribute by a son for his father. In 2018, the car appeared at the Carlisle Chrysler Nationals, where Gregory met Casey Maxson, historian for the Historic Vehicle Association. The car was awarded the National Automotive Heritage Award and in 2020 inducted into the National Historic Vehicle Register permanently cementing its place in history. In 2021, the car had the honor of being displayed in the Washington DC National Mall where countless people got to enjoy this piece of automotive history. So what's the future hold for the Black Ghost? Well, we'll find out soon because Gregory has finally decided to sell the legendary car. The Black Ghost will be going the auction block at Mecham in Indy 2023 and will be looking for a new owner. Will the car be kept original, or will it finally get a restoration? One can only hope that whatever the new owner chooses, the car will be put on display for others to see and enjoy and not end up in a private garage somewhere.